All right, let's learn how to make a sticker from an image we've created in Adobe Illustrator. So you need to make sure that your sticker that you've created is actually already vectorized. Um, if you've traced something, sometimes you end up with this situation where there's like a white background behind everything and you'll need to get that. So if you just do an image trace, it's important that you click on, once you have the image trace, there's a thing down here that says expand, and then you can grab the background and pull it off. So I'm ready now, I have this image, I thought it would kind of looked like a shop image, and we wanna make a sticker that cuts around the outside of this saw blade. Now there's two ways we can do that. We can either have the cutter cut around the outside of the saw blade with like a little white border, or we can have it cut right on the saw blade, but then we're gonna have to do something else. So I'll show you the first way first, and then I'll show you what we need to do the second way. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our entire sticker, and we're gonna make a copy of it. So we're just gonna right click, hit copy or control C, and then we're gonna paste it. So now we have a pasted copy, and I just like to move this off to the side. Pro tip, spacebar and mouse lets you grab the page and move it around. Scroll wheel goes up and down, but if you press Alt and scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. So that helps you just move around a little faster. So I have this guy here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create one solid image out of this, like one solid shape. And I do that with this tool on the right here called the Pathfinder. So Unite will typically work perfectly. If it doesn't work and you have little dots on the inside, you need to use, I just, Control Z that, this merge tool first. So you hit merge and then you hit unite and it works. So, but for this one, it's nice, it works perfectly. I just hit unite. And so now I've created this new shape that's just the outline of my design. Um, to turn this into a cut line, we could select our shape. And to add the cut line, what you do is you first, you got to go into fill and you're going to look up your colors. If you don't have any colors in here, it's because you're not, haven't created an original file. You're just like editing the original, doc, your, your PDF or, or whatever document that you grabbed. So what you should do is go file new, make a new file that's about three inches across. That's a good sticker size. And then paste your work into that. And then you should have all your colors. So I have colors here. I'm gonna hit this plus new swatch. So I'm gonna create a new swatch and it needs to have a special name. It needs to be spelled capital C U T C O N T O U R, cut contour. No space, two capital C's. Now, if we made this a process color, that would be like instructions for the printer. We would send the printer instructions to mix, in this case, 100% magenta and the rest zero for cyan, yellow, and black. But what we're going to do is we're going to send it as a special instruction, and that's called the spot color. So in this case, the instruction to the printer is cut our contour out. But if we were, for example, the Coca-Cola company and we wanted our uh, Coca-Cola ink to be used, our special red, they would have a name. They might call it Coke Red, and they would be a spot color. And that would make sure that they use that special color of ink instead of trying to mix it in the printer because inks... Printers aren't always perfect at printing colors. So we had to do that in the fill first because you can't add a swatch in the stroke tab for some reason. So I'm just gonna now change that to a stroke and I'm going to make my fill transparent. So now I have this shape that's floating. It's exactly the cut line of my design. Now, if you wanna see this a little more clearly, you can make your stroke as thin as possible. So make it about 0.25. It does cut th exactly in the middle of your line. So even though it might look like the line is overlapping a bit, it does cut right on that like middle of the line. Now, this is all okay right now. I'm just gonna make it bigger so you can see it. Um, but if we were to cut like this right now, our knife might accidentally wander a little bit outside of the cut. Sometimes the knife and the image don't get perfectly aligned. And so we wanna build a little bit of leeway in for that. So there's two ways we can do that. We can make our line a little bigger. So we could try, I guess, making it large. Oh, wrong one. Every time. Got our, nope, wrong one. 
grab that one. If you're having trouble selecting something, you can always pull up the layers tab and grab, you can see all the different parts of your design. So by doing that, I've selected just that path. Um, we could just try and like make this bigger so that it fit nicely outside of our design, but you'll see that never works perfectly because it skews it. It works okay with like a circle. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a special tool. I'm just control Zing back to my shape here and I'm gonna go edit, sorry, object, path, offset path. So the offset path tool lets us create a path that's either a little bit larger or if we put a negative in front of it, and I'm just hitting tab and that takes me to the next one and it moves it. it, it previews it for me. So that would make the line a little smaller. Now I want my cut line to be, if I want it to be right on the line, then I have to um, you know, keep it at zero. But let's say we wanna make it a little larger, we're gonna move it out so that we get that white border around. So let's set it as at 0 0.1 inches. That's kind of a normal amount. That's okay, but it's a little soft. It creates these like soft edges um, because it's sort of trying, it always tries to make like, um, you know, the smoothest corners it can. So let's go to 0.5 or 05 of an inch. And now we've created a little white border that follows our lines a little bit more exactly. So I would probably be happy with that. We can go ahead. Now our only problem is our inside line is still pink, so we'd have to change that to transparent. And now when we send this to the printer, it would cut on the outside. But I also wanna show you what to do if you want to cut exactly on that line. Let's say we want our sticker to have a nice black edge. So that's called adding a bleed. And so I'm just gonna undo till I'm back at my point. And I'm going to create, I'm gonna do the same thing. I've created my cut line perfectly where I want it. And I'm just going to do an offset path. So I'm going to go to object, path, offset path. And we're going to make a path that's a little bit bigger than my design, 0 0.5, 0.5 of an inch. That's about two millimeters. Um, but instead of creating a cut line out here, I'm going to just add a fill. I'm going to create, make this black. I'm going to get rid of my cut line. And right now it's sitting in front of my design, which is not what we want. So we'll just go right click, arrange, send to back. And now I have a black border around the outside of my cut line. And so what'll happen now is when the knife cuts this line, we're gonna peel the sticker off from the inside here. And all of this stuff will be left on our pad. That's called weeding. We're gonna remove the outside and we'll be left with just our sticker and our nice black edge because even if the knife goes outside of the line a little bit, we have a little bit of leeway there. So when you're ready to bring this to, your, to the printer, you're gonna to need to save it. Now, right now I have this saved as a PDF, which would work, but if you don't have it as a PDF, just go to save as and either save it as a PDF or an EPS. They're both very similar files, it's all good. And we'll just save it as AOB Shop Saw. And then once that's in our OneDrive where we will never lose it, we can then take it and we'll drag it to a flash drive um, and bring that over to the printer. So I hope that that made that a little clearer for you. And uh, good luck, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask uh, your teacher for help. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.